everyone. Brand rising, good afternoon, whatever, <clears throat> whatever time you're doing this at. Today's free class is a wrist free yoga practice. <clears throat> and the reason I wanted to do a wrist free yoga practice is because my wrist pain has been um, a pretty large part of my yoga journey these past three years. Yeah. <clears throat> Um, the first couple months of my yoga journey, I was unfortunately really into, um, the aesthetics of yoga. Not that that's bad, but it led me to pushing myself too hard. Um, I hurt my knees, I hurt my wrists, and I also hurt my back, which I actually ended up leading to, um, <clears throat> A lot of sciatica pain uh, which is the like nerve that starts in your hip and goes down so because of that um, one of the biggest modifications I've had to do in my yoga journey is instead of coming up onto my palms is I'm actually always on my uh, fists um, it's pretty rare sometimes very very rarely um, now that I've taken yoga training and I have a little bit more of an understanding of yoga anatomy and I know how to safely engage my wrists I very rarely might, but for the most part, one big modification I've had to make and have just learned to um, incorporate without really thinking um, is coming up onto my fists. So because wrist pain has been um, a big part of my journey and I've had to maneuver around that and figure out how to still engage and connect with yoga, um, I know that my journey is actually not very unique. Uh, a lot of people actually get wrist pain. And a lot of people don't realize that there's actually modifications, there's poses and everything that you can do that does not require you to put pressure on your wrists. So that being said, today's yoga class is really to um, be a, a training ground almost, or a beginning of an exploration of poses that don't require any pressure on the wrists, just so that hopefully you guys are able to see that it is totally possible to do an entire class without the wrist, uh, without using your wrists, and you're still able to build up heat, you're still able to get that prana moving through your body, and um, without pushing yourself. So that being said, some props that you guys might find useful today would maybe be to come up onto a block. Um, I'm actually on two pillows right now. And that's just to elevate my hips. Um, personally, I find that in my body, when I elevate my hips on pillows or a block, um, I'm able to really extend through my spine a lot more easily than when I just have my bum on the floor. So you might find it useful to have some blocks. Um, you may also find it useful to have maybe some blankets rolled up. Really anything that you feel is going to bring more ease into your class today. <clears throat> Can I please have some water? And as always, um, I give explicit permission for you to disobey me. Thank you. Um, if I cue a pose that does not feel good in your body, of course, I want you to listen to yourself rather than listen to me, right? Who cares what the hell I cue? If it doesn't feel good in your body, I don't want you to do it. So keep that in mind today and really just move nice and slowly today. Um, I'll be honest, I just woke up from a nap. So I'm like really trying to just move slowly through today's practice. I'll invite you guys to take a sip of water, a sip of tea, anything before we um, meet up on the mat and begin today's class. Today I'll begin in crisscross applesauce. I'll extend through my spine and I'll roll the shoulders up and back and create some space between the ears and the shoulders. I'll begin here for five breaths um, as deeply as I want them to be today. And I'll begin to just really ground myself into this space and start to feel that connection with the ground and my body.
leaving my palms on my knees, I'll begin to do seated cat cow. So on my inhale, I'll arch the back, open up through the chest space, let my head relax back. Exhale, curve the back, letting my head come forward. Inhale, extend and arch the back. Exhale, curve. Tucking that chin in. Inhale. Exhale, curve your back. Let's do two more. Matching our movement with our breath. And maybe on your exhale, you chill in this curved form. Tucking the chin in and breathing deeply through our curved spine. On my next inhale, I'll slowly roll up, back to center. Then on my next inhale, I'll slowly start to form circles with the nose. Nice and gently as I breathe and move in one direction. Maybe as you continue with your circles, you slowly start to widen. Breathing through the sides of our neck as we move through space nice and gently though. Still extending through our spine, so checking in if you started to maybe slouch. And then maybe when you feel like you've gone one way enough times, you reverse your circle. back and forth and take any other movement that will feel good in your neck and shoulders today. So maybe you shake the head yes or no, side to side. And when you're ready, let's come back to center. Making sure our hips are parallel. We'll inhale and raise one arm, doesn't matter which one. Exhale, tilt to one side. Inhale, back to center. Exhale, drop the hand. Inhale, raise the opposite hand. Exhale, twist to the opposite side, or stretch to the opposite side. Inhale, back to center. 
Exhale, bringing the hand gently down. Inhale, raise the arm. Exhale, twist to the side. Stretch to the side. <laughs> Feeling grounded with the lower body, but still being active in our fingertips as we extend to one side. Breathing here nice and deeply for two more breaths. Still lifting through our spine. Exhale back to center, lowering the arm nice and gently. Inhale, lift the opposite arm. Extend to the side for three. Grounding through the lower body and extending through the upper. Exhale, back to center, nice and gently. Inhale, raise the opposite arm up. Exhale to the side, like a little teacup. Inhale, back to center. Exhale, bring the arm down. And let's extend to the side one more time. Inhale, lifting up the arm nice and gently. Exhale, extend to the side. Three breaths here. Being mindful if there's any tension between the shoulders and the ears. Exhale, back to center. Now I invite you guys to join me in some forward folds. Um, I'm going to extend my legs out long, but you can also stay in crisscross applesauce if that feels good for you today. If you are going to extend your legs out long, let's just gently lift up the knees and slowly extend. I'm going to keep a generous bend in the knees because I don't want my knees to get locked up. So really having a nice, generous, loving bend in the knees. Extending through the spine, pointing the toes towards the third eye. Staff pose. We'll inhale and lift the arms up any amount. Exhale, fold forward as far as you'd like to go today. And let's relax here in this forward fold for about three breath cycles. And really the knees here can be bent any amount. Still extending through our spine as we fold over. Inhale, halfway lift. Maybe placing the hands on the knees. Exhale, fold forward any amount. Inhale, roll up nice and gently. Exhale, 
exhale forward forward in and out here for three more maybe as you deepen your breath maybe you're able to explore forward fold a little bit more Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, fold. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, fold. Inhale, roll up, staff pose. Lifting through our spine. And we relax through the lower body and let gravity ground us. Next, we'll take one leg, doesn't matter which, but I'll start with my right leg. And I'm gonna bring it in almost like a half butterfly pose. So I'm actually going to quickly turn my yoga mat just so that my feet aren't on the hard floor. So we have one knee bent towards the groin, like a butterfly pose, and the other leg still out long. And if you'd like, you can open up the, long, the leg that's out long to the side a little bit more. Open yourself up and give yourself some space. So instead of it being out by my hip, I'm just going to open it up to about the edge of the mat. And I still have my other leg here. It's okay if this knee doesn't come to the floor, but when we do fold forward in the one-legged fold, um, do pay attention and do try to keep your weight down. You don't have to like yank it down, but just enough where you're putting pressure on it because we do want to keep this knee as low to the ground as possible. So I'll turn towards my leg that's out long I'll pull back my hip crease so it's not out all the way, but I'll pull it back in so that my hips are parallel. I'll inhale, lift the arms up as I extend through the spine. Exhale, fold forward, bringing the head as close as it can get to the knee, but we don't have to pull, remember? And again, we can have a nice, generous bend in the knee. We'll fold for three breath cycles doing our best to keep that bent knee to the ground as much as possible. You may also find it beneficial to put a block or a blanket underneath the knee. Inhale, rolling up nice and gently. Exhale, fold, keeping the toes pointed towards the third eye. Here for two. Inhale, roll up nice and gently. I'm going to gently bring the leg that's out long in towards my groin and we'll switch and feel the sensation on the other side. So I've got my opposite knee towards my groin and the opposite leg extended. Opening it up just a little bit. 
I'll begin to turn towards my extended leg. Pull the hip crease back so that the hips are still parallel. Inhale, raise the arms. Extending through the spine. Exhale, fold forward any amount. Keeping that bent knee as close as it can get to the ground. As close as we want it to be to the ground. As we surrender for three breaths. Inhale, rolling up nice and gently. Keeping the toes pointed towards the third eye. Extending through the spine. Exhale, fold forward any amount. We're here for two. Inhale, roll up nice and gently. Again, I'll nice and gently bring the foot in. So before we end today's class, in five minutes of silent meditation, I'm going to invite us all to do boat pose, which is a wonderful pose that always gets the energy flowing in me and really builds up the heat in my core. So I'm taking off my socks so I can have a little bit more grip here. So I'll plant the feet on the floor, coming into this seated position with my knees bent. I'll take a little swig of water before we begin a uh, boat pose. I'll begin to extend through the spine and really, really giving a lot of breath and attention to my lower back. In boat pose, it is a position where we are on the bum and we have the legs lifted up and we are using our core strength and um, the extension through our spine to hold us up as we have our legs lifted. So there's a couple different variations that we can do boat pose in. So if the quote unquote standard version is a little bit too much where we open up through the shoulders, extend through the spine and lift up. If this is too much for you, go ahead and try one leg up at a time. Going like this. You can also use um, your hands behind the thighs as balance. Just being careful that you know we're not curving the back, but we're really lifting up through the spine because we don't want to hurt or put any pressure on the lower back. So again, this is acceptable as long as we are lifting through the spine and not relying too much on our hands to keep us up. This works too with the legs up, or of course we can have the legs up, arms extended. You can even play around with extending through the spine. But I just wanted to go over a couple of variations um, before we go in just so you guys can kind of have an idea of what might work for you so again we have <clears throat> the feet planted excuse me extending through the spine rolling the shoulders up and back and rotating outward through the shoulders We inhale, extend through the spine. Exhale, lift, and we're here for five. So again, there's a couple of ways we can do this. So experiment and play with what feels good for you today. Really keeping in mind that we wanna have a gentle, beautiful lift through the spine so that the lower back is not pressured. Four. Three. 
three, two, feel the heat, one more, you got this, inhale, exhale, letting the feet come back to the ground, all right, so now let's transition into whatever pose we wish to take for our five minutes of silent meditation. That can be a child's pose, um, crisscross applesauce. Of course, the traditional corpse pose works too as well. Um, I believe I'm going to be on my back and I'm going to have my knees. Well, I'll place my feet yoga mat distance apart. And then I'll allow my knees to fall in. <clears throat> Slowly transitioning onto my back, especially if you came into this class um, because you have wrist pain. Really, really move very slowly and with intention and compassion. Of course, you can do this in any pose you like, but if you are transitioning onto the back, please do so with compassion. So my feet are parallel with each other, about yoga mat's distance, and I'm gonna let the knees fall in. And my hands to rest on my hips. And we'll take about five minutes of silent meditation. Remember, if any thoughts come up, just allow them to be released without having an attachment or getting worked up over it. Just let them be. I will gently bring the class back into the space after five minutes. That being said, I hope you have a wonderful five minutes of silent meditation. Our five minutes begins now.
my class our five minutes is up i encourage you to slowly come back into the space perhaps we wiggle the toes a little bit maybe we start to incorporate the fingers and then maybe we slowly bat the eyelashes open As we transition off of this mat, I really want to invite you to move slowly and very compassionately, almost like you're walking through water or jello. Just really, really intentionally slowing down the movements, especially, especially if you came to today's class with some pain. I would never want anyone to exacerbate that pain. So please move slowly and intentionally, not only on the mat and off of the mat, but as you go about the rest of your day. All of the lessons that we learn on the mat apply to a lot more than just the physical yoga practice. So just keep that in mind. I'm going to heel toe, heel toe, the feet back together, letting my knees drop to one side. As I slowly roll my body to that side into a fetal like position, I'll slowly come up onto my forearms. Roll gently, using my fists to prop me up and coming back to seated. Thanks so much to everyone who joined today's free class. Um, we have two more offerings this week. Uh, we have the Root Chakra Yoga this Wednesday at 6 p.m. And this Saturday at uh, 9 o'clock, I believe, we have outdoor sun salutations, um, weather permitting. Or excuse me, no, not this Saturday, that's actually next Saturday. Um, this Friday at 6 p.m., we have a goddess flow um, dedicated and aiming to um, bring forth and heal the divine feminine in us. And that, of course, is open to everyone because everyone, regardless of the gender or sexual identity we express, um, we all carry the masculine and the feminine within us. And it's really important for all of us, uh, regardless of what parts we have or don't have, um, to balance out those energies. So that being said, again, thank you so much for joining in to today's risk-free yoga class. Namaste.